Hi, in this video I will explain the basics of infrared spectroscopy or IR spectroscopy, how does it work and how can we use it to identify the different types of functional groups that exist in an organic compound. In IR spectroscopy, IR radiation is used to identify the different types of functional groups or the different types of bonds that exist in a compound. How does this work? When a molecule absorbs IR radiation, there are two types of vibrations which may occur. The first one is called the bond stretching vibration, and the second one is called bond bending vibration. So the energy of IR radiation causes a vibration in the molecule. There are two types of vibration. The first one is called the stretching vibration. And this is basically stretching or compressing a bond just like a spring. The other type of vibration which may occur in a molecule because of the absorption of IR radiation is called the in-plane bending vibration. And this causes bending of the bonds but in-plane. The other type of vibration is called the out-of-plane bending vibration. And this bends the bond out of the plane, so toward the viewer or away from the viewer. So the absorption of IR radiation by molecules causes uh, these three types of vibrations. Because of these vibrations, we will be able to identify what type of bonds and what type of functional groups exist in a compound using IR radiation. How does this work? Identification of functional groups by IR radiation. In a molecule, there are different types of bonds. Each bond has its own strength. So we have strong bonds, we have weak bonds, and each one has its own strength. Now, each bond will require a different amount of energy in order to be stretched, compressed, or uh, undergo this in-plane or out-of-plane vibration. For example, uh, if we have a carbon-hydrogen bond, then the wave number of IR radiation that is needed to stretch this bond is equal to 3,000 centimeter minus 1. Whereas, if we have a carbon-oxygen bond, then the wave number is equal to 1,100 centimeters minus 1. Just to remind you that a wave number is equal to uh, the frequency of uh, light divided by the speed of light, which is C, which means that the energy, which is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, will be equal to also Planck's constant times the um, frequency or wave number times C. So this is telling us that energy and wave numbers are actually proportional. So as the wave number increases, this means that the energy which is needed to stretch the bond increases. So based on this, we know now that stretching a carbon-hydrogen bond requires more energy than stretching a carbon-oxygen bond. So how can we use this information to identify the different types of bonds and how does the IR spectrometer work? When a compound is irradiated with IR radiation, this IR radiation will have a wide range of frequencies. So usually, the compound will be irradiated with IR radiation, which has photons that have wave numbers ranging, let's say, from 400 centimeter minus 1 up to 4,000 centimeter minus 1. So inside the IR spectrometer, uh, the IR radiation which is given to the compound will have this range. So the numbers will be, let's say, 401, 402, and then up till 4,000 centimeter minus 1. So this is step 1 in the identification process. The spectrometer will irradiate the molecule with a, a big amount of photons. Each one has its own wave number. Um, ranging from, as I said, 400 up to, let's say, 4,000 centimeter on this one. Now, compounds are selective, so they don't absorb all the energy which is given to them. They only absorb energy which is 
uh, needed to stretch their bonds. So they are selective in determining what type of photons or what uh, wave number of photons is needed to, uh, to uh, stretch their bonds. This is just like an example of um, putting like a table which has all different types of foods, but they will be selective in choosing only f certain types of foods that they can they can eat. They will not eat everything. This is uh, the same in compounds. So you give them different types of IR radiation uh, with different wave numbers, but they will be selective. They will only select those wave numbers which can stretch their bonds. So for example, if the compound contains a CH bond, it will select, it will ab absorb this uh, wave number. Uh, if the compound contains a carbon oxygen bond, it will absorb the 1100 centimeter minus one. However, if a compound doesn't contain a carbon oxygen bond, then this wave number will not be absorbed. It will be transmitted. So absorption of the IR radiation with specific energy that can stretch their bonds will only occur. Now, the second step is that, so the first step was, remember that we irradiated the sample. We gave the sample um, the different uh, wave numbers or different IR radiations with different wave numbers. Step two is that the compound absorbed some of these um, wave numbers. Okay, the third step is the detector. At the detector, the detector will look at all the IR radiation and will identify which frequencies, which wave numbers are missing. And based on the missing frequencies, we can identify the bond. So for example, let's say our compound absorbed the 1100 centimeter minus one wave number. The detector will know that this one is missing. And because of this, we know that our compound contains um, the carbon oxygen bond. If the 3000 centimeter minus one peak is missing. This means that our compound absorbed uh, this and this indicates that the compound contains a carbon hydrogen bond. So based on the um, peaks which are absent, we can identify the bonds that exist in a compound. So the IR spectrum is a plot of the percentage transmitters versus wave number and the absorbed frequency will appear as a band going down. So how can we read this? Um, so at the X axis, we have the wave numbers, or the, which is in centimeter minus one. And at the Y axis, we have the percentage transmittance, and this is 100 per transmittance. Okay, let's assume that all these peaks which are here don't exist, and let's say we only had a line which is at 100. What does this mean? This means that there is 100 transmittance starting from 400 centimeter minus one up to 4,000 centimeter minus one, which means that our compound didn't absorb anything. So all the um, IR radiation wave numbers are 100% transmitted. So there's no absorption. However, which is usually not the case whenever we have an organic compound, we will always see all these different types of peaks. So what does this mean? For example, let's start from here. At this point here, this corresponds to almost 3,400 centimeter minus one. What is this peak telling me? This is telling me that at this wave number, only 10% of the light is transmitted, which means that 90% of the wave of radiation, which has a wave number 3,400, was absorbed by the compound. Again, this is another peak, which is around, let's say, um, 2,900 to 3,000 centimeter minus one. We only had around less than 5% transmittance. This means that our compound absorbed 95% of the radiation, which has this frequency, and only 5% were able to um, reach to the detector level and so on. So this is what uh, the IR spectrum looks like and this is what uh, it means. So based on these peaks, so whenever I see, as we will see in this video and the next video, whenever I notice that there is absorption at 3400, for example, I will know that there is an oxygen-hydrogen bond. 
For example, later on you will see that there is a peak at, uh, um, at let's say, 1700. Whenever I see seven, uh, absorption at 1700, I know that there is a carbon oxygen double bond or a carbonyl group and so on. So we will learn this in uh, the upcoming slides and in the next video. Each IR spectrum has uh, three characteristics. The first one is the wave number. The second one is the intensity. And the third one is the shape of, uh, the, uh, uh, of the peaks. Let's talk about the wave number. The wave number is mainly related to the strength of the bond. So the absorption of wave number depends on the atomic size. This is the first factor which we should take into consideration. And uh, basically, this is usually important if we are comparing elements which are of different sizes. As atomic size decreases, the bond length decreases, and this means that the bond will be stronger. And that's why the wave number of the absorbed IR radiation will increase. So uh, remember that always a smaller element means that a bond is shorter and means that the bond is stronger. And that's why as the strength of the bond increases, then we need higher energy, we need more energy to stretch the bond. As you can see here, uh, starting from the carbon chlorine bond, chlorine is a big element, it's in the third row. That's why we only need like 700 centimeter minus one to stretch it. Oxygen is smaller in size than chlorine because it's in period two. Now we need 1100. Deuterium and hydrogen, uh, they are both, uh, this, those are isotopes of hydrogen. However, hydrogen is smaller in size and that's why you can see that it needs around uh, 3000 centimeter minus one to stretch it. So um, as the size of the element decreases, then the amount of energy which is needed to stretch it increases. So you need higher energy. The second factor also, which is the bond strength, it is basically, uh, this can be clearly seen if we are comparing elements, similar elements. For example, in this case, as bond strength increases, the wave number will increase. For example, if we have a carbon nitrogen bond, a single bond requires only 1100 centimeter minus one, double bond requires 1600, but a triple bond requires 2200 centimeter minus one. So as the uh, um, bond becomes, uh, gets stronger and stronger, you need more energy to stretch it. The other also factor which affects the wave number is the hybridization of the elements. So, the, and this is usually used if you are comparing similar elements with different hybridization. As the S character increases, the bond length increases because the element, uh, because we are getting closer and closer to the nucleus, and that's why the bond strength increases. For example, here, as you can see, we have a carbon hydrogen bond in all cases. However, this one is a, um, this carbon is sp3, this is sp2, and this is sp. So um, in going from sp3 to sp2 to sp, the bond is getting shorter and shorter. And because it's getting shorter, it means it's getting stronger. And that's why stretching a carbon hydrogen bond at an sp hybridized carbon requires uh, 3300 centimeter minus one compared to 3100s to the double bond and 2900 to um, the single bond. So this is another factor which affects the um, wave number of absorption. The uh, other factor is resonance. Usually resonance will decrease the wave number because it will make the bond weaker. So for example, if you compare in both cases, we have carbonyl here. However, in this case, the carbon, in this case, there is resonance. Because of this resonance, as you can see here, uh, the wave number of abs absorption is 1680 compared to 1720 for a, ca a carbonyl without resonance. So resonance causes, um, weakens the bond because when I draw the resonance of this compound here, this bond will, this bond will be a single bond. And that's why it's double bond here, single bond here. So usually it's like one, the bond order is one and a half. And because the bond is getting weaker, this means that you need less energy or a lower uh, wave number to stretch the bond. This is another example of esters. So this is a conjugated ester. Uh, it, it is the frequency or the wave number is 1710 compared to 1740 for a non-conjugated carbonyl of, uh, of an ester uh, group.